In section 1.8, we're introducing the idea of the linear transformation. Now, we really don't have any new computations going on in this section, but there's an important shift in thinking about how we're looking at matrices. And we're going to start looking at a matrix as a function. Okay, so here's the idea. Uh, so suppose I've got some matrix here and we already know the idea of matrix multiplication. Uh, if we were multiplying this by a vector, uh, the vector would tell us the weights of the four columns. So we could say let's do um, two of the first column and negative three of the second column and one of the third column and two of the fourth column, just making this up. But um, so this is written as a multiplication, and we know what this multiplication means. I probably don't have to write out all the in-between steps, but I will uh, write them out at least once, just for clarity's sake. So it would mean 2 times the first column or first vector, uh, minus 3 times the second one, uh, plus 1 of the, of the third one, and plus two of the uh, fourth one. And then you just get to do a bunch of arithmetic and try not to screw any of it up. And hopefully you get your results here. So let's see, the top entry should be two minus six, so negative four minus six plus six, so zero. And the bottom entry should be negative 6 minus 12 would be negative 18 plus 1 would be negative 17 plus 4 would be negative 13. All right, so so far we've called this vector, well, matrix multiplication, but it's a way to combine a bunch of vectors. And it's just a shorthand notation for that. In our language so far, we've basically called this the A. Uh, this got called the X, and this thing over here typically got called the B. Of course, the naming of variables is arbitrary, but that's the convention our book has used so far. Uh, with a little bit of a shift in perspective, though, we could call this matrix A a function, and the X is the input to the function, and the B is the output to the function. Um, in pre-calculus, we typically called functions F, so we would call this f of x. Uh, in linear algebra, they like to call functions t for, uh, for transformation. So we'll use the notation of saying this is a transformation of x. Uh, the transformation, of course, is based on the matrix A. But as we look at it as a function, we'll use this t of x notation. Uh, so we could say you know, the transformation of 2, negative 3, 1, 2 is uh, 0, negative 13. And you can use round brackets or square brackets here. It doesn't matter. Um, notice, by the way, that I've taken a four-dimensional vector and transformed it into a two-dimensional vector. Uh, this can be pretty useful in lots of applications where you're doing signal processing, computer graphics. Maybe you want to change something that's two-dimensional into something that's three-dimensional. Um, map a two-dimensional satellite photograph into a three-dimensional map of the surface. Uh, lots of other applications. Um, but yeah, let's make that a little more explicit. Let's just point out that we took something that was in four-dimensional space. If you're not familiar with the notation, it's this R with the double bar. Uh, that means real numbers, four-dimensional. So four-dimensional real space. And we've mapped something in R4 uh, to something that lives in R2 in two-dimensional space. Uh, so let's get a little bit of vocabulary here. Uh, let's introduce the words domain 
and range, which I think you are already familiar with, and you could probably guess what they're gonna be for this one. And you're probably not familiar, oops, with this word codomain. Uh, so the domain in this particular instance um, is all of R4. That's where the input vectors live, and you can input any four-dimensional vector to this function. Uh, the range is um, all R2 vectors that are actually outputted by T of X. And the reason I make that last phrase there is it's not clear necessarily that I can get to every single R2 vector right now. Uh, maybe there's some that this transformation just can't output. Uh, maybe it can't output zero, zero or something else. I don't know. Um, so, but the range is still, that's what we typically mean by range is all the things that the function can actually output. Uh, the function can actually produce codomain Uh, generally is, is where the range vectors live. Uh, for our particular example, the range vectors are in R2. So domain is always going to be like all of R4, or all of R2 or R6, whatever the domain vectors are going to be, because uh, there's never any limitations. It's not like we're taking the square root here or dividing by zero or anything. There's no limitation. So domain is always like all of our four. Codomain is always all of some space as well, of R2 or R6 or whatever. It's just saying, hey, this is where the output vectors live. Uh, for us, the output vectors are two-dimensional, so the codomain is R2. Uh, the range is not necessarily all of the codomain though and I, and I haven't analyzed that for this problem yet but it may be that the range is all of r2 uh, but it may also be there's some r2 vectors that this particular function cannot produce okay so there's a little bit of a start to the vocabulary and the concept shift of looking at matrix multiplication as a function and then getting these words of domain and codomain and range um, okay, so let's look at another example. Uh, so here I've got a different transformation. And maybe before we get started, uh, it's worth talking about what the, what's the domain? And what's the codomain? Uh, keep in mind, co domain and codomain are both going to be entire spaces. So it's going to be R something and R something else here. Uh, so maybe just take a minute and see if you can figure that out yourself. Pause the video, come back when you think you've got the answer. OK, uh, so hopefully you've got an idea. Uh, keep in mind that the multiplication times a, a matrix tells us how to combine the columns. So we need a two-dimensional input. Uh, and part A, by the way, kind of gave that away. Uh, so a two-dimensional input will say do three of the first column and one of the second column. That's what we need. So the domain, the input vectors, uh, live in R2. Uh, any two-dimensional vector can be an input here. And then once you do that, once you actually multiply three times the first one, and add one of the second one, let's see our results for this particular example. See, 3 plus 2 would be 5, uh, 6 minus 1 is also 5, and 9 
plus 1 is 10. Uh, so notice that the codomain is apparently R3. Input vectors live in R2, output vectors live in R3. Uh, the range, I don't know about yet. I mean, I know 5, 5, 10 happens to be in the range, uh, but I don't know if the range is all of R3 or if there's some three-dimensional vectors that this transformation can't produce. Matter of fact, that's the part B question. Is just to say, is 444 four, four in the range? Um, in other words, is there a 1, 2, 3, 2, negative 1, 1, times some input uh, that will produce 444? Four, four. There's an open question. And we have various ways to look at solving this, but really only one way to actually solve this. Uh, whether you transform this into vectors and kind of write this, this same thing, but with an x1 and an x2 right there, or whether you multiply it all the way back out to linear equations, ultimately it's going to come down to row reducing an augmented matrix. Um, so ultimately, we are going to have a matrix that looks like 1, 2, 4, 2, negative 1, 4, 3, 1, 4. And do keep in mind, this is an augmented matrix. Right? So there's, there's an equal sign where these uh, little dotted line is. And we will see if there's a solution to this or not. Uh, so this is the time to reach for technology. Uh, let's see where if I got my okay yeah so we want to reduce one two three two negative one one four 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 um, the reduction of that reduces to pretty simply uh, keep in mind this is an augmented matrix so that very last row says zero of x1 plus zero of x2 has to equal one which is impossible so this is a no solution So this, this reduces to 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. And again, since this is an augmented matrix, that last row means 0x1 plus 0x2 has to equal 1. Or to simplify, it means 0 equals 1. No solution. Uh, so a short answer is 444 four, four is in the range of the function. No, it's not. Uh, which, by the way, does mean for us the range is apparently... I'm not saying what the range is. haven't gotten that far yet. Uh, but apparently it's not all of R3. Um, and if you think back to our previous section about uh, linear combinations, I've got three-dimensional vectors, but I've kind of only got two two of them. I can only move in two directions in three-dimensional space. Uh, so I'm basically going to be able to trace out a, a plane in three-dimensional space, but without being able to move in that third direction with the third vector, uh, I'm not going to be able to get to every place in R3. Okay, I think that's good for this video. Uh, we'll unpack it a little bit more in the next one.